Hi bestie! Long time no see. Welcome back to my channel. I have a new haircut. I have my hair short now. I got bothered by the long hair and cut it off. My sister did it. I think she, she did a good job. I'm pretty confident with it. Pretty much like it. So currently my sister is in town. I was kind of talking to her. I was super down to crochet something new that I haven't done so far. I wanted to do something big again that I've never seen before, which is a dress. And as you might know, there are different cool Pinterest uh, granny square dresses all over Pinterest. And I have like the feeling this summer they're coming back. So I thought I'm gonna do my own granny patch, granny square dress for my sister. And she absolutely loved the idea. We ended up actually finding a very cool granny patch. It's a twirl. And if you turn it the right way, like this, it looks like a wave. So let me introduce you to my new project. I'm gonna do the wave dress. I absolutely love this name. I can't wait actually to show you guys and uh, lead you guys through the process. This is the patch. I'm working on tons of patches. You need lots of patience for this project and tons of patches in order to create the dress in the end. So we're gonna start right off with the wave patch. The difficulty about this is you have to work with four colors at the same time time. We're gonna start right off with the white. I think it doesn't matter which color you're gonna choose for your first color but I'm gonna start right off with the white and we are going to do a simple slip knot and we start chaining up four. Uh, try not to make them too tight and then we're gonna connect the last chain, the fourth chain, to the first one by poking our hook into the first stitch, yarning over, pull the yarn through and then pull the yarn through the last stitch. So we slip stitch the first stitch with the fourth stitch together. And then we created like a little circle. And that's our circle that we are going to use to poke in our next stitches. We're gonna poke into the bigger hole right away, grab the yarn and we yarn over, pull the yarn through both loops for our single crochet. And now we're going to do a half double crochet. So we yarn over first, go into the big loop, grab the yarn, pull it through. We have three loops on our hook and and now we're going to yarn over, grab the yarn, pull the yarn through all three loops. And then we're going to do two double crochets next. So we're going to grab the yarn, yarn over, go into the big loop, grab the yarn again, yarn over, pull it through, grab the yarn again with our hook, pull it through the first two loops only, remaining two loops on our hook, and now we grab the yarn again and pull it through the last two loops, finishing up our double crochet, and now we're going to do the whole thing once again for a second double crochet. When we've reached the second double crochet, we're going to stop for now working with the white and continue working with the blue. In order to not lose our chain, we're going to pull a long end in order to secure it. And now we are going to work with the next color, attaching it to the hole. Place the next color next to your um, double crochet. So now we're going to attach it by looping it through the hole, attach it with a slip stitch. And now we're going to go directly into the big loop again, grab the yarn and do a simple single crochet. Now we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to do a half double crochet. So we grab the yarn, go through the big loop. We have three loops on our hook. We yarn over and pull the yarn through all three loops. And now we're going to do two double crochets again. So we're gonna grab the yarn, go through the big loop, grab it again, pull the yarn through the first two loops, grab the yarn and pull the yarn through the last two loops. And we're gonna repeat that for a second double crochet. And now we are actually done with the blue for now. And we are going to move it next to the white all the way. So we still have some spot in the big loop left for two more colors. So we're gonna do the same process again, pull a long end because we have stopped working for now with the blue. And now we are going to attach the next color, which is the dark blue in my case, and do the exact same process. So we attach it with a slip stitch, we do our single crochet first, then a half double crochet into the same big stitch, a double crochet and another 
double crochet, pull it long and move it all to the side. So now we're going to add the last color, which is in my case the beige, and we're going to do the exact same thing again. So we attach it with a slip stitch, make sure to hold the axis yarn so it doesn't slip through, and now we're going to do a single crochet, a half double crochet, and two double crochets. Pull it long again, and now we are finished with our base. So now we are going to continue with row two and we are going to start right off with the white. We're going to go into our long loop, pull it tight again with the axis and then we are looking for the first stitch actually where we're going to place our next double crochet. So in order to find this we are going to count back four stitches. So we're going to place two double crochets into that little tiny stitch. Finding it is kind of difficult and also putting your hook through. It's kind of difficult, but don't worry, that's normal. Now we're gonna place one double crochet into the next stitch, and now we're gonna go into the last stitch for this row and place two double crochets again into that stitch. And now the same process again, we're gonna pull it long and stop working and we move on to the light blue, pull it tight, count back four stitches again in order to find our first stitch and do two double crochets into our first stitch. Then we're gonna do one double crochet into the stitch in between and then we're gonna do two double crochets into the last stitch, ending up having five new double crochet stitches. For the blue. Now we're gonna pull it long and go directly into the next spot which is the dark blue attaching our two double crochets into the first stitch, one double crochet into the next stitch again, two double crochets into the last one. So we're gonna go into the last one which is the base, base in our case. So we're gonna place our stitch into the first stitch. That's like the hardest one because it's always kind of tight. And we're gonna place another half uh, double crochet into that stitch. Now we're gonna place one double crochet into the next stitch and two double crochets into the next stitch. And we're gonna stop working now. So you can actually check if you've done this correctly by counting back six stitches on the white. So if you have six stitches left on the white, you've done it correctly. So you found the first stitch on the beige. So now we're gonna hop on into the next color again, which is the white. For our last row, two half double crochets into the same stitch, which is the next stitch. And now we're gonna do three double crochets into the next upcoming three stitches. And now we've reached our last stitch again, which where we gonna add two double crochets again and finish up the white leaving a long end and now we're gonna do the same thing with the light blue with the dark blue and with the beige so two double crochets into the first one we're gonna do three double crochets and two double crochets into the last stitch now we're gonna pull along and with the beige, start right off with the white and closing it up. For the closing process, we are going to do two double crochets again into the next stitch. Then we're gonna do one double crochet into the next stitch again. Now we're gonna do a half double crochet into the next stitch, a single crochet into the next stitch and a slip stitch into the last stitch, pulling a long end and now you can cut it and pull it through, finishing up the color. And that's what we're gonna do with the rest as well. half patch actually. You're gonna see this in the arrangement in the end. Um, we're gonna start this time with a magic ring. Then we're gonna do a single crochet into the magic ring. Then we're gonna do a half double crochet into the magic ring. And then two 
double crochets into the magic ring and this time we're gonna start with a dark blue now we're gonna pull a long end tighten up the, the magic ring a little bit so it's a little bit tinier and now we're gonna take the beige which is the next color in this case attach it to the magic ring with a slip stitch so we're gonna attach it with a slip stitch now we're gonna do a single crochet then a half double crochet into the magic ring we're gonna do a double crochet and another double crochet pull a long end and now we're gonna close the magic ring pull it tight as soon as we pull it tight we're gonna go back to the blue to the dark blue insert our hook and we're gonna do two double crochets into the first stitch then one double crochet into the next stitch and two double crochets into the next stitch again pulling a long end go back into the beige chain up one pull a long end and cut it because now we're actually done with the beige and there's one spot left actually for the blue so we're gonna go back into the blue so at our hook and do two double crochets into the next stitch and now we're gonna top it with one chain chaining up pull a long end and cut it because now we are also done with the dark blue now we're going to attach the light blue on the opposite side and suck our hook into the first stitch there and then we're going to um, attach it with a slip stitch of course we're going to chain up one again we're going to do a double crochet into the same stitch now we're going to do one double crochet into the next one and two double crochets into the next stitch continuing the pattern with two double crochets into the next stitch now three double crochets into the next upcoming three stitches then two double crochets into the next stitch and again two double crochets into the very next stitch and one normal double crochet into the last stitch in order to make it even we're gonna do another one this time a half double crochet into the same stitch top it with one chain pull a long end cut it and pull it through and now we're gonna attach our hook again on the opposite side again where we just started actually crocheting with the light blue and attach the white chain up one again and now we're gonna go into the next stitch with a double crochet then we're gonna do two double crochets into the next stitch then we're gonna repeat it again two double crochets into the next stitch then we're gonna do one double crochet into the next stitch one half double crochet into the next stitch a single crochet into the next stitch and a slip stitch into the next stitch pulling a long end and cut it and we are done with the half patch now we're gonna um, weave in the axis yarn and this is how it looks right now and these are gonna be handy in order to yeah tighten the the dress and the upper body area beneath the chest and on top of that we're gonna set the cups <laughs> Current update. This is how it looks right now. I'm working on the second cup and I've also tried out how to yeah sew them together or crochet them together um, and it worked out pretty good. That's what I'm going to show you afterwards as well. I posted this on social media and so many people told me they look like tight parts. No, they, these are supposed to be waves, not tight parts. I would be pretty pissed if somebody told me that's the tight part dress. It's not the tight part dress. That's insulting. <laughs> <laughs> these are the cups that we are working on. We're gonna start right off with the white and uh, we're gonna do a slip knot. And we chain up four and connect the fourth chain to the first chain in order to build like a little circle with a slip stitch. And then we're gonna chain up two and start to double crochet into the big circle. But we're gonna poke it into the inner circle 
and start double crocheting into that inner circle for two times. When we've done those two times, we're gonna chain up one and now we're gonna double crochet six times into the big circle. When we've completed six double crochets, we're gonna chain up one again, continuing the pattern with six double crochets into the inner center circle and then we're gonna top it with one chain and connect the last double crochet with the first one with a slip stitch. Now we are finished with the center part and now we're gonna change up the color integrating the new color, tie a little knot, like tie the axis of the new yarn with the old working yarn. We chain up two with the new yarn, with the new color, turn our work, that's very very crucial, and now we're gonna do two double crochets into the hole that is down below. We're gonna count three double crochets and skip those three double crochets and work our next three double crochets into that gap. The six double crochets that we just did from the first row, we're gonna divide it into three, three parts and put our new three double crochets into that part. And now we have the top part, the pointy end of our cup. We're gonna put in five double crochets into that top part. Now we're gonna chain up one and gonna do another five double crochets into the same gap. And now we're gonna skip three double crochets and put our next three double crochets into that next gap. And now we're gonna skip three double crochets again and we're gonna do three double crochets into that one, and the last one. And then we're gonna chain up one and change the color again. And we're gonna start working with the dark blue by chaining up one, uh, two and work two double crochets into the gap down below and repeat the whole pattern by jumping into the next gap, adding three double crochets, jumping into the next gap again, adding three double crochets, gonna separate the five double crochets into a three double crochet and two double crochet part. So we're gonna count two double crochets, join the next double, three double crochets into that gap. Now we're gonna count the next three double crochets and work our five double crochets into the big pointy gap. Topping it with a chain and now we're gonna work five double crochets all over again into the same gap. One, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna count three double crochets, join the next three double crochet into that gap and mirror the whole pattern actually on that side too. Now it's crucial actually that we're gonna join in the last gap, only one double crochet. And now we work the same pattern actually for seven rows. And the last row will be the eighth row which will be back to the beige that we worked on the dress because the whole color is in this beige theme. So we're gonna end and finish up the cup with the beige, as you can see it here. And when we've reached the end, we're gonna chain up one, put a long end, cut it. Now we're gonna weave in all the access yarn down below and we have our cup. All right, Bessie, so as soon as you got the hint of how to do the half patches and the normal patches, you need to do tons of patches in order to create the dress. For the front part of the dress, you're gonna need 28 patches, normal patches, plus two half patches. And for the back, you're gonna need 26 patches plus two half patches. I'm gonna blend this in, in a arrangement here for front and back. So in total you're gonna need 54 patches and four half patches and of course two cups and the rest will be strings. Now we're at the part actually where we crochet all the patches together to one piece. And as you can see those patches are not quite squared, you can slightly see the corners. Each corner consists out of two double crochets that has been done into the same stitch. And that's what we're gonna use actually to insert our hooks. So we're gonna use that huge gap between those two double crochets that we put into the same stitch 
and insert our hook in between and attach our yarn. We're going to chain up two and then we are going to do two double crochets into the same stitch. So we end up having three double crochets because the chain up also counts as double crochet. Then we're going to top it with a chain and we're going to skip the next stitch and go directly into the next stitch with a single crochet. And then we're going to chain up two on that single crochet, count three stitches further and do a single crochet. Then we're going to repeat the pattern, chain up two, we're going to do a single crochet and then we chain up one again and search for the set of two double crochets that we put in the next upcoming two stitches and we're going to insert our hook um, with a double crochet into that gap three times. So we're going to do three double crochets into that gap, chain up two in order to build our corner and do three double crochets into the same gap again. And now for the edges actually we're going to repeat the whole pattern as we did for the first edge and we're going to do this for this side, for this side and go down again. We, got, we leave out the last side. What we're going to do is now we're going to connect the next granny square actually to the pattern and repeat the pattern. In order to connect those two patches we stopped at the one edge by doing three double crochets into one of the edges. Now we would actually chain up two. We're gonna do that still. We're gonna take the new patch, search for the corner gap again and do a double crochet into that corner gap. We're gonna do another double crochet into that same gap. When we've done the second double crochet we're gonna connect the double crochet with a slip stitch into the gap from our other patch. Then we chain up one, skip the next stitch. We're gonna do a single crochet into that stitch. On top of that single crochet, we're gonna connect the single crochet with a slip stitch to the other single crochet. Then we're gonna chain up two, skip the next three stitches, do a single crochet. When we've done the single crochet, we're gonna connect the single crochet to the other single crochet of the old patch. And um, with a slip stitch, we chain up two, we skip the next three stitches, insert our hook into the third stitch again, do a single crochet into that third stitch. We're gonna connect the single crochet to the other single crochet from the other patch. With a slip stitch, we chain up one, and now we're gonna do three double crochets into our corner gap again, and we chain up two and we're going to do three double crochets into the same corner gap again. There's no connecting part at that corner actually and we're going to continue the same method actually onto the next edges of our patch until we hit the next end again where we're going to connect the next patch. So we're going to connect in total five patches for, for one row. And then we're gonna go up and we're done with the first row. So as you can see is I kind of created a certain pattern with the waves. When we at the end we are not gonna crochet the last two edges. In order to connect the next row we're going up. That means we stop crocheting here at the third double crochet and we're gonna chain up two and we're gonna take the next patch search for the corner gap and we're gonna do a double crochet into our corner gap, a gap three times this time. When we've done the third double crochet we're gonna connect the third double crochet to the gap of the first row of the last patch with a slip stitch and then we're gonna chain up one, we skip the next stitch, we do a single crochet into that second stitch and we're gonna connect the single crochet to the other single crochet and then we're gonna chain up two, do the same pattern again for the edges actually until we hit the next corner where we're gonna do three double crochets into the corner gap. Then we're gonna attach the next patch which is in line next. We're gonna ignore the other corner of the first row. We're gonna jump right into the next corner of the next patch and connect the last double crochet that we've done with the corner of the second patch of the first row. And then we're gonna take the next patch. We're gonna do three double crochets into our corner gap and do the whole process all over again. When we've hit the last patch of the row, we're going to chain up one and then we're going to connect the last double crochet with the corner end of the patch down below with a slip stitch and then we're going to chain up two and we're going to do three double crochets into the same gap again and work our way the edge up and then we are going to repeat actually the same process that we've done in the first row. So when we crochet around the patch we're going to end up with three double crochets in the last 
double crochet gap. Then we're gonna chain up one, we're gonna pull a long end, we take our hook, go diagonal, insert our hook into the corner, we're gonna go underneath that crocheted chain that is in between and we're gonna insert our hook into our loop again pull it tight and now we're gonna pull this loop underneath the chain into the corner and chain up two and we're gonna do our three double crochets into the corner gap. We're gonna do the same thing actually as we did in the first row and when we've hit the second row we're going to start the other pattern again by attaching a new patches and then we're gonna do this pattern again in order to connect the space in between the patches and we're gonna do this with all the patches until we actually hit the fifth row because then we are going to attach the half patches at the edge of our dress. You're gonna start decreasing in your pattern actually and uh, attaching the half patches in order to have it more tight at the chest area. We are left off at the last double crochet. We chain up one, we turn our work, put three double crochets into that stitch and then we're gonna attach the double crochet to the double crochet of the patch in the row below. And then we're going to chain up one and hop into the same stitch again, do a single crochet and attach the single crochet to the, to the single crochet of the patch down below. Then we're gonna chain up one and go into the next stitch and then we're going to do a single crochet into that stitch, connect the single crochet to the stitch down below and we're gonna chain up one again hop into the next stitch again, do a single crochet, connect the single crochets with the single crochet down below, we chain up one again, look for our corner gap where we're gonna crochet our three double crochets into the gap. And we start and end with the same process of the patch but in the middle section it's a little bit different. When we've done the three double crochets into the corner gap we just normally work the same way as we did with the normal patches and when we are at the end of the row we're going to attach the same half patch again and we're gonna repeat the process and then we're gonna go up and then we are going to set our three double crochets in the corner in the first stitch on top of the half patch placing two double crochets, uh, two chain ups here and then three double crochets again. And then this side, this edge is a little bit shorter than, I mean it's, yeah, shorter than the normal patch. So what I did is I chain up one after the third double crochet, placed one single crochet in the middle, then we are going to chain up one again and place our three double crochets into the next corner gap. So if when we have all the pieces together, all the front part and the back part is all crocheted together, we're going to lay the front part and the back part on top of each other. The ugly side, the side with the seams, is facing the outside. So because when we uh, attached everything, we're going to turn it around inside out and we have the pretty side on the outside. And now you have to decide if you want to sew the parts together or if you want to have a little bow part, side part area on the sides. But I can fully recommend to have the bow parts on the sides, then you can adjust the dress to your size and you do not have any difficulty to put it on. So we're gonna insert our hook at the fifth row and start actually crocheting the pieces together with the granny square technique. And you can also add a cutout at the end if you want to. That depends on you. I left a cutout, that means that you just don't connect the pieces together and you just work the granny square technique on one of the patches. And then when you're at the end of the dress, we're gonna turn the dress around and work on the down end of our dress until we hit the end, chain up one and finish up the whole dress. We're gonna do this on the other side as well. And then your dress is kind of done and we are going to attach the cups. As for the cups, we are just simply adding the cups by sewing them on. Start sewing from the inside, like from the middle section. If you start sewing from the outside as I did, I actually had to open it up again because they weren't exactly perfectly placed in the middle. So start from the middle and work the way to the sides. When I attached the cups, I also did a little single crochet row around the cup. Then uh, at last but not least, we're going to attach 
attach the straps. You attach the yarn to the pointy end of the cup. You chain up 60 and you repeat that on the other cup and on the back side. You have to decide for yourself where you want to place the strap on the back side or if you want to connect the strap to the back side and have only one strap or you want to tie a bow on, the, on top of your shoulders. That is also up to you. And for the strap on the side, we are going to do a chain of 100. I also rounded it up with a little knot at the end. Weave then the strap on the sides and tie a little bow to the sides as well. And then your dress is actually done. Bestie, it's done. Look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. Um, it looks so pretty on my sister and she really, really liked it. Bessie, um, that was my video about the dress. It worked out for me and I can't wait to see all your results on the dress. I have like the feeling this project is so cool. I absolutely love it. If you love it too, feel free to give it some thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, feel free to subscribe to the channel for more beautiful crochet things on DIYs, music, etc. Uh, in the future. And I can't wait to be back in the next video for you guys. Um, I hope you have a good day, a good morning, a good evening whenever you're watching this video. And thanks for watching. And I can't wait to be back in the next video. Bye-bye. Ciao.